Welcome to the Cunningham Piano Show, where we explore life between the keys. I'm your host, Hugh Sung, and we're here in Del Mar, Delaware, our brand new store, our third store. So exciting. I'm here right now with Tim Oliver, one of the co-owners of Cunningham Piano. Tim, welcome to Del Mar. Hi, Hugh. Del Mar is pretty terrific. Do you know what Del Mar stands for? I just learned this last <laughs> night. I, I learned it with you. <laughs> Please go ahead. No, no, you help me. Well, De Delaware and Maryland and uh, just... Uh, the road out there is like the, 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 the state line. Right. Yeah. So one, you can actually step on one side of the road and you're in Delaware. And yeah. the other side of the road, you're in Maryland. Well, and that's the thing that I didn't know is when you're you, when you're driving down that road, which has there's houses on the left and houses on the right, and it looks like you're just in a regular town, but on that side is Maryland, and on that side is Delaware. And we're of course we're we're on the, we're on a, the amazing side of Delaware. So it here. does make sense to call it Del Mar. Del Mar, right? Brilliant. Right. And, and Del Marva is that kind of in relationship to Virginia? Del Mar. Del, so Del oh, Marva, right. Del, yeah. So this is a cool area. And at the end of that stretch in Del Mar is the old mill. Oh, right. We were, we, so we came here last night to help set up for the grand opening of the Del Mar branch of the Cunningham, uh, can't Cunningham Piano Show. <laughs> Cunningham Piano Store. We're here. <laughs> we have a lot of facets right now. So but we, the old mill is this wonderful restaurant where you learned to eat Maryland, or should we say Delaware crabs? I don't know. What are they? What Maryland we, we, or Delaware? What is it? Mar Mar Maryland, crabs. Maryland crabs in Delaware. Yeah, yeah. So they tell me I'm a quick study. I ripped them apart, and I got really messy, and I absolutely have to wash those clothes. <laughs> uh, but uh, and, and I think there were parts of me that smelled mo like that. What was the seasoning Oh, on that's it? what that odor is. What is oh. it? Old Bay. Old, Old Bay, Bay. seasoning. Yeah. Everything on me smells like Old Bay. That's right. But it was a, an amazing night. Anyway, you can see the address down here and the phone number over there. Come visit us. We're just opening today. It's so exciting. And in a little bit, we're going to have Glenn Clutter, who is the manager of the store here. We'll have him on the show, and I'll grill him a little bit. But we've got some special guest artists. I am so excited. We've got musicians to come perform for you. So, and to and what a great way to inaugurate a piano store with piano performances. Absolutely, yeah. And. And we have what? We have two pianos that are prepared for people to try? Yeah, right? well, we have more than two pianos. Well, but, but, but you've got with the video and right, the right, microphones right, right. and all that stuff. So we've got, uh, we're going to start with the. Uh, I, think, uh, I think we're going to start with Erin. Are you all set? And, the, and she'll be playing on the N3. N3X, right. right. So we've got uh, a, a huge selection of Yamaha pianos, acoustic pianos. And go ahead and have a seat over there. She's going to be going on to our stage. We actually have a stage here in our store. And on that stage is the Yamaha N3X, which is a hybrid grand piano. You want to tell them a little bit more about what makes this piano amazing? Sure. So hybrids. Uh, hybrids are actually pianos. You know, they have the all the action parts, the 5,000 moving action parts in a standard grand piano. In terms of the key action. Yeah, wood, right? wool, mm -hmm. leather, felt, and cloth. But rather than the hammer hitting a string, there's no strings. So uh, the experience from the pianist's perspective is if they're playing a full nine-foot concert grand piano with the binaurally sampled CFX sound, which is a lot to say, <laughs> uh, but it, it, it's the most authentic concert grand experience you could have without having strings. It's so cool. Let me switch cameras over to, I've got all these cameras here. Let's switch over to the show, Erin. And uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to go ahead and walk on over and let's interview her. Erin, thank you so much for coming to be on our show. It was a surprise. <laughs> I'm being put on the spot. I don't know why I'm here. But you played a little bit, and you thought you were just doing a, a little recording, and we roped you in to do a live performance. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> so, Erin, uh, how long have you been playing the piano? Um, 14 years. Wow, for a long time. But you don't look older than 12. I'm kidding. <laughs> May, may I ask how old you are? I'm 18. 18. So you started when you were four years old. Wonderful. And can you tell us who your teacher is? Um, Luba Paskova. Ah, and I think we're going to have her teacher here on the show in just a little bit. So uh, what do you think of this piano? This hybrid? Have you ever played a, a hybrid piano before? No, not before today. So uh, how do you like it? It's, um, it's very interesting. Definitely different, but it's cool. Cool. Well, what are you going to play for us? Um, do Arabesques by um, Debussy. Yeah. 
I think we're going to play the first of the two arabesques, right? Yeah, the first one. Do you know what's so special about that first arabesque? Yes, it was published in 1891, and that's when the store opened. <laughs> I've trained her well. Thank you so much. We look forward to your performance. Thank you. 
Oh my goodness, that was so beautiful. Erin, thank you so much for that wonderful performance. Thank you. Um, have you ever performed in a live stream before? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> Again, thank you so much. And what's, uh, so are you going to college soon? Yeah, I'm going to um, Loyola University, Maryland. Oh, fantastic. And will you be maj majoring in music? No, but I might minor in it. I hope you do. Yeah. And, I hope I'll help, and I hope you'll be playing for the, the rest of your life. That was really beautiful. Okay, take care, okay? I think our next, if I can get back in camera, yeah, there you go. So I think our next performer is actually gonna be Aaron's teacher, Luba. And forgive me, Luba. Luba Paskova. <laughs> Hello, Luba, please have a seat. No, no, it's a beautiful name, it's my, but we just met, so, and I have a very bad memory, so it's all my fault. I don't remember your name, too. <laughs> That's okay. You don't need to remember me. So, Luba, um, where do you come from, if I may ask? I was born in Russia, in St. Petersburg. Oh, wonderful. And how long have you been here in, in the United States? I have been here 20, for 20 years, and all this year, I just landed in Salisbury. For 20 years, I've been in Salisbury. Fantastic. So, most of your time really in this area? All the time. Well, you know, the student, I mean, what a wonderful student you work with. And um, what are some of the things that you enjoy most about teaching in general? Um, there's a wonderful kids in Salisbury, very motivated. Uh, when I look at them, I'm thinking that a uh, new generation is really wonderful and smart. I like to teach them feeling of music. How would you describe the feelings uh, that are most powerful in the music that you teach? Most powerful feelings? Hmm. It could be different feelings. Um, it's all emotions, of human emotions are feelings. It's, uh, it's interesting, I think, in, in a lot of education that emotions are almost not talked about or discussed, but this is the one area where I think as musicians we can really reach young people. Right, music can... Uh, can um, uh, can uh, show more emotions than language. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's a beautiful way of putting it. Actually, according to Levitin, professor and ne neurologist, uh, we have more predisposition for music than for language. Thank you so much for sharing that. And what would you like to perform for us today? Um, I will perform Debussy, uh, Clara de Lune. It also was kind of surprise and <laughs> <laughs> un unpredictable. <laughs> she wasn't preparing to perform a live stream, but Luba, thank you so much. Claire Delune, one of my favorite pieces. In, we really enjoy this.
almost have tears in my eyes. That was so, so beautiful. Thank you so much. It's the best compliment about your tears. Thank you. Really, I, I think that's what you really meant about emotion. emotion. Exactly. Thank you so much. And just for folks in this area, because you are very active as a teacher here in this area, where can people f contact you if they want to study with you? I have a website, lubastudio.com. Also, you can find my information at Salisbury University because I am a part-time professor. Salisbury University, part-time professor, and uh, lubastudio.com? lubastudio.com. Spelled L-U-B as in Bob, A studio.com. Okay, great. So make sure you make note of that studio. Oh, I'm sorry, last question. And um, what, uh, do you have a specific age of students that you like to work with? I'm teaching all ages, <coughs> but basically I think when a child can read, he's ready for music, for piano. Luba, thank you so much for the surprise performance. <laughs> thank you very much for this opportunity. Absolutely. All right, let me jump over to the, to the other camera. Oh my goodness! This is such. This is what a, what a wonderful way to inaugurate a store, right? Oh yeah, it was it was just fantastic. Yeah. I'm so pleased that they were here to perform yeah. for us, both of them. Yeah. And uh, Aaron had made a comment uh, before playing, or perhaps it was after, but you'd asked the question if she'd played a hybrid before, mm -hmm. and the answer was no. Mm -hmm. And and that made me realize that there's a little bit of context mm. that we should have here. Mm -hmm. So. Cunningham Piano, we are a 130-year-old company, and we're based in Philadelphia. And we have a factory there where we restore older pianos. It's a fairly large complex, four stories and 30,000 square feet. And uh, we also have a retail store in uh, King of Prussia and uh, Cherry Hill, New Jersey. And, and the question came in recently that there was uh, a bit of a void in this area of Lower Delaware for people to actually try these instruments. And, uh, you know, obviously you know, I know, and you probably know uh, that we are selling more pianos online than ever before, you know, with uh, the pandemic and, and, you know, people wanting to have things to do at home and piano is, is kind of like resurfaced as an amazing thing to get to do. It, uh, your mental processes benefit, your, your participation. I mean, like, you know, Aaron, 18 years old, obviously has practiced very, very hard, right? And, and has become quite a nice musician. How nice that you get to share that on mm. something like this, right? Mm -hmm, now, right? Mm -hmm. But this area didn't have an opportunity to get its hands on these pianos. So that's really why we're here, is so that people down here in Salisbury and all of Maryland and Lower Delaware can actually come in and try them. You know, we're happy to take your orders over the phone, but we'd much rather meet you. And now, obviously, restrictions are being lifted. We are being allowed to meet people. You're vaccinated. I'm vaccinated. Lots of people are being vaccinated. Please go get vaccinated. Please, yes. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, you get to actually come in and try them. That's the goal. So we've been listening to an N3X. Mm -hmm. We also have lots of traditional acoustic pianos. There's lots of different pieces of technology that Yamaha puts on them, so you, you get to experiment with all of them. But I'm going to stop talking in a little <laughs> bit now because the whole reason why we're here is Glenn Clutter. That's right. That's right. we got to get Glenn. Hey, Glenn, come on over here. <laughs> and we're actually lucky enough to have a nice handful of people here right now, and I think he's talking to somebody that's looking at a, a piano, right? Uh, Right, so, but we're gonna. It, is it okay if we have you come up here and 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 uh, I'd like to yeah, just kind of yeah, come around this way. And or uh, actually, I mean, if you're if you're, you know what? I think Tim's gonna do the introduction. So why don't you come around this way? Yeah. 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 So uh, Glenn has been in this industry for a long, long time, and uh, I'm not gonna tell you how long. Well, it's remarkable how good he looks for how long, <laughs> right? Uh, but um, you know, so Yamaha had asked for us to make more of a presence in this uh, neighborhood. And here you were wanting to get back into pianos. Yep, I missed the business, want to get back in, and, and here we are. Yeah, yeah, so it was it was sort of like uh, kismet in a way that uh, all these things came together where there was a market that was asking for us to be here. There was a, a, an individual with the ability to serve the market in the proper way, and we had the resources to supply it. So. Congratulations, Glenn. Thank you. you Thank got a you. piano store. I'm tickled to death. We love the Eastern Shore and, and 
Eastern Shore needs a good piano store, and we're going to do our best to make them happy. Yeah, absolutely. And so you have a friend down here. I think you said his name is Phil. Phil Perdue. Everybody knows Phil Perdue on the Eastern Shore of Maryland. And Phil just happened to pop in for us. So uh, we are going to ask Phil, would you like to play a piano for us? Phil, we're going to put you on the spot a little bit, but you're used to that. You've played for everybody here on the shore. And what's the piano we're going to have him play? What do you want to play, Phil? That, that looks great. That's a C2X, CX Series Yamaha Grand Piano. So this is a straight acoustic piano, and uh, uh, it is a part of their premium series. Play whatever you feel like playing. Do what you do. Phil, thank you so much. Have a seat. Yeah. Make okay. yourself comfortable. And can you introduce, uh, so um, what would you like to play for us? Well, I don't know. I'll... <laughs> I play in local restaurants, and I just play a little bit of everything, so I don't, I, I, you know, I'm just, I'm not a, a seasoned, well, I look seasoned, <laughs> but I'm not a, a trained pianist by any means. But you love the piano. Yeah, I, when I was a kid, I kind of got interested in it, and I wanted to play guitar because I wanted to be in a band grow my hair long. <laughs> my mother didn't want me to play guitar because she thought I'd get in a band and grow my hair long, so I played piano and got in a band and grew my hair long. <laughs> Um, so that's kind of how I learned. She wanted to get me a piano teacher, and that didn't last long. Um, so I just kind of learned from just beating around with bands over the years. And then as I got older, toting all the equipment and everything got to be too much, you know. So I, I thought, well, maybe I can just play piano in restaurants. I call it an old man's gig, but I have old man qualifications now. <laughs> that's plain to see. You can't do an old man's job unless you have old man qualifications. Yeah, so. But anyway. Thank you so much for sharing your music with us. You're quite welcome.
Oh my goodness, Phil, thank you so much. That sounds wonderful. Wow. Thank you very much. I'm going to give you one of these microphones so we can chat a little bit more. Hold on. We'll okay. Right I think that's going to feel a little silly because I'm so short. Okay. <laughs> Just back. Okay. That was beautiful. I think that was, that was called Desperado, Desperado, right? Yes. Wow. Well, I tried to play yeah. songs in restaurants that people recognize, mm -hmm. you know, and they sing their, you sing the words to them and that sure. sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it, jazz is great. I love jazz, but mm -hmm. um, sometimes you can go so far out they don't recognize the song and that yeah, sort of thing. Yeah. And like I say, where I play in restaurants, and of course I play in church too, and uh, so I try to get it recognized. And I've had people ask me, say, where did you get the... Uh, the sheet music? Well, yeah, I said, well, I don't read sheet music very well at all. That is amazing. Yeah. So you do it all by ear. Yeah. And well, what they asked me is, they said, how do you come up with your arrangement? Yeah. I said, well, I, I, I try to, um, you know, just whatever I think it should sound like. I've had people say, how do you keep so many songs in your head? Yeah. And my wife has an answer for that. She said, there's nothing else going <laughs> on in there. Plenty of room for music, <laughs> nothing else going on in there, so I guess maybe that's fortunate for me in that respect. <laughs> y you know, you remind me about why music is so important. You know, it's not about the, you know, the people we idolize in a sense. Right. And, and, and I think a lot of times people come to a piano store and the first thing they say is, oh, I'm not good enough for a piano. And, and uh, or they feel like, I, you know, I don't deserve a piano like that. And you. As you say, you play songs that people want to hear, pe the songs that people love, and that you connect with. And you make your own arrangements, and you make something so beautiful just out of yourself. It's just amazing. Well, thank you. Yeah, I, uh, I really don't know how to play any other way because, like I say, I, I, I listen to a song, and I, it's always my interpretation of that mm. song. It's not somebody else's. And I think a lot more people should. I've had people say, well, I can't play by ear. I can't do this. I think it's because they won't step outside the box. Yeah. No, I was never in the box. <laughs> I have to work outside the box. <laughs> that is wonderful. Thank you. Is, is there anything else you'd like to play for us? Well, I mean, I, I, I usually sit and play four hours. Woohoo! <laughs> okay. There we go. Well, I mean, you know, if you, really, if you want to hear something, I'll just, whatever comes to my mind. Yeah, if you don't mind, give me a second. I'm going to just set the microphones, and then I'll give you a cue when my, when my hand goes down. Play something else. This is wonderful. Yeah, I had, you know, hope you guys realize this is a live stream, so we're seeing your comments and all the compliments that people are saying. Oh, they, really? they, yeah, they're, they're, I'm well, getting I a lot of wonderful feedback to your playing, so keep it coming, well, keep the claps coming. Thank well, you. I would like to make a comment yeah. about the piano. When Please. When I first started playing this tune, mm -hmm. um, and of course, I've had people say, I never hear you make a mistake. Well, <laughs> I, that's impossible, so I try to master the art of covering mistakes. Ah. I don't try to master the art of playing perfect, because I can't do that. <laughs> But I got a little bit tripped up in the beginning, and the reason was because this is such a great piano. The low mm. end sounds so good. Yeah. And I, I don't 
always play real low because it depends on what piano I'm playing right. on. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I wanted to catch a few of those low notes and, uh, where I don't usually do that. Yeah. When you play on a nice Yamaha piano like this, yeah. I mean, if I had one of these all the time, then I would be stretching out more <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Yeah, there you, you go. Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> I knew you, yeah, yeah, you can make that happen. You know, you, you pointed out something that's really interesting, an interesting technical thing about pianos. You've hit on the, the um, if you want a secret to discovering whether a piano is really good or not, hit some bass notes. Yeah, if yeah. they sound tinny, you realize yeah. something's wrong because that's really one of the most exposed oh, areas of the piano, yes. right? Oh, yeah, I, lo I love it. And I, 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 I can I honestly say yeah. um, the, my favorite piano I ever played on in any church or anywhere was a Yamaha, and I think it was an. I think it was a, at least a seven, maybe bigger. Wow. It was awesome. Yeah. So Yamaha, I mean, I mean I'm mean, i sure Cunningham and everything else is good, but is, from my experience, uh, I've really enjoyed Yamaha pianos when I can get a chance to play them. We love Yamaha <laughs> pianos, too. It's the reason why we are the Yamaha dealer of the year yeah, here you. in Delaware, too, yeah, you know? I mean, it's, just, yeah. it's just a great piano. Well, you know, Yamaha is the world's, I mean, I think don't people don't realize, Yamaha's been making acoustic pianos since 1900. They've been making pianos for a very long time. And they are the world's largest piano manufacturer, and as such, I mean, by a very large margin. One out of every four musical instruments is made by Yamaha. And I, I know I want to get to the hybrid because somebody was asking a question about the hybrid piano earlier. Again, Yamaha, what I love about Yamaha is they, they're continuing to innovate the development of the acoustic pianos, but of also cutting edge technologies like the hybrid piano we heard earlier. Well, at home in my studio, yeah. I have a Yamaha Motif. Oh yeah, and sure. And I also have a Yamaha um, Genos. Wow. We talk about a setup. Yeah, now the, it's interesting that you say the Genos. We don't have a camera set up, but we actually have the new Clavinova CVP line mm -hmm. of Clavinovas. The CVP 800 series actually has the Genos engine. Does it? The really? sound, yeah, the sound engine well, inside. It's amazing it. then. It, it's really good. They, so, yeah. So, yeah, I didn't mean to say Yamaha's just amazing on acoustic. They, they've got it going on all the way around. Well, that I think, and like you, <coughs> you have a lot, you, you, your music comes really because you love it. Mm -hmm. I think that's what I sense mm -hmm. from Yamaha as well. They're a company that loves, I mean, tr genuinely loves music, loves the art, and happens to be incredibly successful, and to share that success mm -hmm. and make pianos available for everybody in every use case scenario. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, and it's wonderful that we can share in that and that we can be supported by such a great company. Like oh, that. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm just ha so happy you're here, you're here close by. <laughs> oh, do you want to close us out with one last tune? Think of something, I guess. Something with a lot more bass notes. <laughs> All right, give me, give me a second. Let me, let me get the, the, the microphone set up. I should say something. Hold on. I, I've got, we got a funny comment here. Hold on. Mrs. D says, I couldn't even hear the mistake. Great job. <laughs> and uh, let's see. I, I love this. We got these great comments here. Hold on. Give me something. Let's see. Dr. Kevin's crazy advanced piano adventures. Piano well suited to his playing. Absolutely, makes it. You make the C two eight C C two X sound great. See all these great comments. These people, you've got fans now. This is this is um, this is awesome. <laughs> all right, if you don't mind closing us out, that'd be great. Well, you know, I get a lot of. Oh, hold on, let me get the let me get the mic out to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get a lot of requests, you know, for like Piano Man. And, oh uh, yeah, because I play, you know, but I don't sing w well. At least I don't like the way I sing. I, I can't sing. So <laughs> I try to play it, and everything I play, I try to play it in such a way that you kind of hear. Yeah. It's like you think you hear somebody singing. You're better off to think you hear somebody singing than you are to actually hear me <laughs> sing. <laughs> okay, hold on. Give me a second. Let me let me walk on over.
Phil, thank you so much. Oh my goodness, let me get the microphone over to you. <laughs> you know, just like the song says, and, and like Luba was saying earlier too, how music connects us emotionally. Oh, it does, you know? yeah. And in, in a song like that, the stories that, that are shared, both good and sad and broken and, 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 and struggling, mm -hmm. that we can all bond together through those shared human experiences of just everyday life. And a song like it just reminds us of why music is necessary, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. I've, I've, uh, I've played before and I've seen people cry. Of course, I really thought it was because I didn't play that well, but uh, maybe not. Maybe they were crying. I'm hoping they were crying <laughs> privately. You actually had somebody, one of the folks uh, <laughs> online was saying to give you a recording contract. So, <laughs> <laughs> got a lot of fans out Along there. The recording contract, I had people say, do you sell CDs? I said, well, hmm. I had CDs and I had earplugs. <laughs> I sold out of earplugs. <laughs> Phil, thank you so much. You're quite oh, all right. Let's let me head on back over to our main station over here. There's a microphone for you, Mr. Tim. Let's let's close this out, boy. I'm having fun. How are you guys doing? Uh, I'm I'm having a ball. <laughs> and and while all this was going on, and I had a chance to sort of sneak away a little bit, um, a man came in. And a, so today's our store opening, mm -hmm. but we've been here setting up, and in the and in the meantime, over the last couple of weeks while we've been setting up, people have been trickling in. And we actually sold a few pianos already uh, before we before even today. <laughs> but uh, a man had came in, uh, and he'd been in a couple times in the last week. And he's asked us to set aside uh, for his he and his wife's uh, 25th anniversary on June, I think it was 5th, or June, somewhere just around there. Uh, is their anniversary, and they would like a CVP 809 GP. Wow. So that's oh. uh, the highest level of Clavinova that they mm -hmm, have, mm -hmm. and they just fell in love uh, with, uh, they originally were talking an N3X, and then they, the, they got uh, the 809 in their mind, and mm. then so the GP. Anyway, really neat that uh, we're already making a positive impact on the Del Mar area. And I think hopefully you can get a sense of where we're coming from with our hearts. I mean, we, I mean, and I think, Glenn, I'm speaking for you as well. We want this to be your story. We want you to feel comfortable, you know, w whatever kind of music you play, whether it's, you know, something you just do on the side, if you're just learning for the first time, or if you're a seasoned professional musician and teacher like Luba or a young student or just somebody who likes to have fun. We want you to feel comfortable. Well, that's that's right? an excellent point because you know the traditional piano and the way that we've approached uh, for the last you know a hundred years of, of of study you know has been kind of set in a certain way and 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 people might get the impression that if they don't do it that way that they don't get to participate mm. and that's one of the great things about pianos today and I think nobody does it better than Yamaha and that they are offering new ways for people to learn to play the piano. Not trying to convert people from the traditional way. We're trying to include more people. You know, just so you can put your iPad on the piano. The piano itself can have a key that shows you what you're supposed to hit. Uh, there's, so there, there's so many different ways to come about learning how to play. And, and what's the goal here? The goal is for us individually to enjoy the experience uh, to have maybe a passionate hobby or to be like Phil where you're a professional and you play for other people, uh, to be like Aaron where you're a, an avid amateur and you, you get to play for friends and family and occasionally do recitals and then see where you want to take it. Mm -hmm. It's for you to have your own experience. It's not for us to tell you what your experience is supposed to be. You know, we're getting a lot of comments, like Gene over here asking, what is the 809 thing? Show us. Okay, so I have a confession to make. Now, I've got some new equipment. I've got more cameras. I don't have enough cameras, and this store is a lot bigger than I anticipated. So I focused really on only two pianos, but you know what I'm thinking? Mm. We need to do a Discover Yamaha virtually here in the store. Maybe we can oh, do yeah. a whole different line, because there's so many. So, so Gene, thank you so much. Um, we have a, we have a new 809 video coming out at some point oh soon, gosh, right? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> and, oh uh, speaking speaking of that, and I saw I saw the comments. Somebody said, "Hey, Tim, why aren't you singing?" Yeah, why aren't you singing? Uh, <laughs> I don't know, but <laughs> too many crabs. <laughs> <laughs> too many. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> but 
Uh, if you, when we do release the new CVP 809 video, you get to hear this. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah. Just, much to my chagrin, if you, if you want to have a real laugh, <laughs> well, that's the miracle yeah. of the, the CVP 809. It, it can even make me sound like a seasoned professional singer. You're yeah. It really can. It really does. And that, that is a miracle because I can't sing. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that question, what is an 809, is a really valid one because there really is a lot to discover in the Yamaha uh, uh, product lineup. So uh, the, the CVP series, which the 809 is a part of, is uh, very versatile. It's, it's something that offers a lot of uh, recording opportunities and what have you. So it's a part of a huge digital line of, of things. Now, I want to actually segue into something sure. else. Sure. So I'm sorry. G uh, Glenn is yeah, like, doing. No, I got what it. is this? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. Oh, okay. I, I got it. So, um, <laughs> sorry. It's like <laughs> digital pianos are awesome because they you know, have a lot of things they can do. They never mean, need to be serviced, right? But servicing acoustic pianos is a very uh, uh, important skill mm -hmm. that many people learn. Uh, they, 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 they practice for years and years and years to learn. And the, the C2X that you just heard, uh, which is a, a new piano. New pianos take a little while to settle in. And uh, there's a man here in the Del Mar area named Phil. Uh, Phil Another Phil. Name? Come, on, come on over. Come on over. Oh, Joel. Joel. Sorry. <laughs> I'm learning names. We're new here. That's Joel okay. Smith. Yes, correct. I Thank you. I knew it. I got yes. <laughs> Joel Smith. So Joel Smith is a tuner, and, and, and you have been working on pianos in this area for how long? I have been tuning pianos in this area for about 12 years now. Okay, yeah. great. Um, and I owned a band instrument store prior to that. So I've been in the music business here since 1983. So oh, wow. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. And, and Glenn was uh, sharing with me when uh, we were beginning to think about coming down here mm -hmm. just how musical this area is. Oh, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So there's a lot yeah. of people that, that um, uh, enjoy music either professionally or semi-professionally oh, that yes. are in this area, right? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's been a great area to be in the music business. Nice. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for. I mean, the piano sounded amazing. Oh I'm well, thank sure you. Everybody yeah. out there heard the piano, so you get to thank this man for uh, how good it sounds, right? Yeah, I came in and tuned two of them up this morning. Yeah. So. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. No, and I think you'd said it was a little. It came in a little sharp. And it pushed a little sharp, so I had to bring it. Had to bring it back down. And then the uh, the disc clavier had it had been moved a couple of times, so it was it yeah. was it was kind of all over the place. Yeah, they're a little. They but it can, wasn't bad. They could be temperamental friends. A little bit. Right? Yeah. And, yeah. And around here, we get such humidity changes. So, mm. you know, it's they're, they're always moving a little bit. So Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So uh, you're going to be servicing the pianos that are in the shop. And do I understand right? You're going to be servicing them in the people's homes yes. after they're delivered, right? Yes. yes. Um, so if, if you're asking the question, I want a piano, but I don't know how to take care of it. I'm your guy. We have the guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in fact, I, I just did one up in Rehoboth that had been sold out of, uh, I guess, the Cherry Hill store. I okay. just did one last Friday for a, for a client. And uh, so, yeah, so anything that gets sold, I'll make sure that I service it. But you know, and you, you bring up an interesting point. You know, that's one of the reasons why this made sense to come to Del Mar is we were finding that there were customers that were traveling two Coming and a half, to three hours right. up into the Cherry Hill or yes. the King of Prussia store because they wanted to have uh, a, gr a great piano and, and, and there wasn't a place to come. Well, now there is. It is, it is so nice to have a, a, a piano dealer in this area again because for so long we haven't. And mm -hmm. trying to get a piano in this area, people were having to travel. So now it's, it's good to have one and I'm glad that they've got you know, Yamaha and the new Cunningham pianos. And um, it's, it's nice to have a nice brand, a couple of nice brands to work on around here. So, yeah, yeah. That, that's that's great. We're glad to be here. Yeah, uh, Salisbury University is a pretty big like um, music uh, school. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it's like a, like an anchor for uh, this neighborhood, right? Mm -hmm. like yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, and they have a music major program, and uh, a lot of people come out of that. Yeah, wonderful. So. Well, and it's nice to hear we uh, had a uh, professor from the school here play for us earlier. Mm -hmm. so. Luba, yeah, she's a uh, she's she's excellent, excellent yeah. teacher. Well, we certainly want to invite everybody in this area that is associated with pianos, you know, uh, you know, the university, of course, any of the, the venues, performance venues, to come in and try stuff and share their thoughts and opinions. So oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Uh, how often should people tune their piano? Um, 
at a minimum once a year. Um, I would like to see them get tuned twice a year, mm -hmm. um, kind of before the, you know, before the fall season and in the, in the spring season when the humidity here changes quite a bit. Right, um, because pianos are made mostly out of wood, right? And wood swells, and so mm. it, when, the, when the soundboard swells, it pushes up on the strings and causes it to go a little sharp, and then when it dries out, it flattens out, and then at that point you need to you know, typically tune it again. But that makes at a, sense. At a minimum, you should have it tuned once a year, but ideally two to three, depending on your level of you know, performing. You're reminding me, I believe I heard the advice at one point that when people hear the, the heater come on uh, in the fall, call. Yep. And vice when they, versa. When, they, when the air conditioning kicks in, yeah. Go ahead and have it tuned, you know, twice a year. So that's uh, good things to remember, yeah. you know, right? Yeah. yeah. Especially when you make this kind of an investment, you want to make sure that it's it's maintained and, and kept at its optimal plane. Mm -hmm. And the only way you do that is to tune it and, you know, and then, you know, a few years down the road, you know, some adjustments will have to be made and things like that. And speaking so of that, right, so now we have our uh, rebuilding shop in mm -hmm. Philadelphia. Where yep. So if people have like a 100-year-old piano that's in original condition, we can restore it. Yep. And we can, uh, it takes uh, like half a year to a year, depending on the piano. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are a lot of like intermediate steps of action regulation and voicing oh, for sure. and things like that. Are those things that you do for people in yes. their homes? Yes. Yeah. So that's um, pretty advanced. Yeah. We can, I can do, uh, I can do, you know, grand regulation, vertical regulation. I do hair, I do a lot of hammer jobs because the hammers get worn over time. Yeah. Um, as, as they're played, they start wearing down. And then the overtones and partials just start going real wonky on them at that point. So you kind of reshape the hammers. I do a lot of hammer reshaping, um, a lot of work like that to just to, to you know get the older pianos back up to where they need to be so that they're sounding like they should. That's so great. Um, and and you know uh, that's that's an indication for those that are watching and don't know a lot about piano technology. That's that's uh, above and beyond the standard kind of work done in the home. Oh, sometimes um, a lot of a lot of the stuff I can do in the home. Mm -hmm. uh, it it depends. Uh, sometimes I'll bring them back to my shop, and mm -hmm. I have a shop in my garage, and I'll bring them. In fact, I have a I have a piano right now that's in for um, some moving damage. Um, that it got moved by some house movers that didn't really know what they were doing. And, yeah, um, yeah. It had a broken frame in the back, and so I have that in right now that I'm working on. But it it I try to do as much in the home as I can. Um, just because it's typically easier and less expensive for the client. But, sure, yeah. But if necessary, I can bring them into the shop and, and work on them. And you're also reminding me of another resource down here in the Del Mar area, Salisbury area, is Bill Ferguson Piano Moving. Yes, yes, extreme, so, extreme um, moving. You know, for the folks that are down here that need piano resources, um, moving, tuning, sales, service, everything, we've got it all covered. Yes, we do. And, um, you know, Glenn Clutter is the main focus uh, down here for uh, managing this location. But you've got a ton of resources available just by calling Cunningham Piano in Del Mar. Yes. Well, thank you so much. You're certainly welcome. Nice to meet you. Nice meeting you. Yeah, great. Right. Look forward to hanging out some more. Thank you so much, Joel. Oh, and Joel, how can folks uh, get in touch with you? Did, they, did you go over that? I, I did not. Oh, okay. Oh, so Joel, come have a seat again. <laughs> Tell people how they can get in touch with you. Okay, I'm back. Um, <laughs> that was quick. That was really fast. Um, you can you can call the store here, um, and you know Glenn will certainly give me the the number. Look at the number over in the corner. It's over there in the corner. The number in the corner. Where is the number? Is there? Oh, three oh two. Sorry, there we go. Three oh two nine zero seven five zero two three. Tell Glenn that you need your piano tuned, and he will let me know. Uh, you can also reach me at Joel Smith Music. Um, it's joelsmithmusic.com. I also have my phone number is 410-543-1200, and uh, you can reach me that way. But either way, get up with Glenn here at the piano store or me personally, and I'll be glad to take care of you. That was perfect. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you know, it's so funny. There's such a huge difference between, you know, the professional videos that we produce on our website, which are quite popular, a lot of work, you know, Lighting and editing, and then the live stuff that we get to goof around. <laughs> I just kind of just be ourselves. This is so much fun. <laughs> yeah, and got I a couple of folks in the store know, right? here. This I, is it's, great. It's fun to yeah. see this uh, nice flow of people yeah. coming in to say yeah. hi, yeah. and and uh, you you know that uh, that is a thing that I th I guess I want to be sure everybody knows is if you come in, we're not going to make you buy a piano. <laughs> 
We're probably going to try. No, but, <laughs> but, but, but it, it, this is a friendly place. Yeah. Just come in. You hang out. And uh, uh, we've got snacks. Yeah. We've got coffee. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Big snack table in the corner yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, if, you know, if you're wondering about stopping in and just uh, saying hi, we'd love it. We're uh, right next to the McDonald's. And the Wawa. And the Wawa. And on the, the state yeah. border. Right. The state border. So you, every, I think everybody knows in town knows where we are. This it should. Uh, it's Sus easy to find. Sussex Avenue. Right. The address is down there. Look at that. 33. 8661 North Sussex Highway, Suite 5 to 6. Basically, we're right across. We can look out the window over here, and we can see the McDonald's drive through So if you know where that is, look right across the street. Yeah. That, we, that's us. That is us. Yeah. And we're going to have a new sign, I think, put up very soon, too. Right? We've got a, a yeah. basic sign. Yeah, it's amazing. So this this big sign that's behind us on the wall mm -hmm. uh, is actually the what we have out front right now. It's temporary, but it looks amazing, mm -hmm. considering it's temporary. Temporary, and the, the new one's going to yeah. be even more amazing, yeah. right? Wow. <laughs> We're here in Delmar with crabs. <laughs> oh, oh, wait. I need more crabs. Definitely need more <laughs> Delmar crabs. But I, I'm, I'm getting a sense that the folks here are really, really warm, hospitable, sincere, sure. and, and just, and they love music, which yeah. is great. And it's just, and that's our mission. Oh, you're looking for more comments? Okay. I am, yeah. Yeah, Mrs. Ms. D was asking if it'd be great if we could do a virtual show. Okay. And. Jennifer Nicole Campbell. Hey, Jennifer, if you're still on here. Jennifer's a Delaware. Uh, you're a Delaware resident, right? Thank you so much for the congratulations. I appreciate yeah. that. I think you're closer up to our neck of the woods. But, uh, yeah, come on down, Jennifer. You should come visit our new Delaware store. I know it's may maybe a bit of a hike for you, but Jennifer Nicole Campbell is another phenomenal Delaware-based pianist. So amazing musician, wonderful human being. And that's, I think, what I'm looking forward to a lot here in Delaware is getting connected with the musical community, mm -hmm. yeah, and getting more, I mean, just meeting more wonderful, piano-loving, music-loving folks that we can share this amazing connection with. Yeah, definitely. That, that's the main reason to be here. Right. That yeah. and crabs. That <laughs> 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 anyway, it's a beautiful day outside. This is gorgeous. We're live streaming, and we're just looking for folks to come visit us and help us celebrate our grand opening I'm really excited. Yeah, I, um, you know, I'm just thinking about that whole Discover Yamaha thing that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with all, all of the different facets of what the products are. Mm -hmm. So Clavinovas um, are kind of like the most popular, I would say, maybe, of everything. So um, if you've not experienced what they are today, uh, definitely come in because they fit anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, they sound like nine foot concert grants. If anybody remembers spinet pianos, you remember spinet pianos? Those were the really short, dumpy looking pianos. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. And they sounded really bad. Really tinny. You yep. hit them and you're like, your ears would hurt. Technicians yeah. hated them because <laughs> if you had anything go wrong with a part of the action, they had something that's called a drop action, and everything was so compact inside, they were impossible to repair. Mm. Um, and I bring up spinets because nobody makes a new spinet. They stopped making them sometime in the 80s. Do you know what else came out in the 80s? Uh, I, I'm trying Clavinovas. To ah, <laughs> I was trying to think of some kind of a, an 80s band <laughs> name, but I, I, of course I'm not familiar with 80s music. <laughs> I might be. You, you might be. I might be. The Clavinova, it's been out since, like, what, 1983? Yeah, Amazing. yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And they are so good. Mm -hmm. uh, they feel like a, an amazing upright piano. Mm -hmm. They uh, they sound like a nine-foot concert grand piano. Mm -hmm. And with all the new technology things that have been added to them, you can be so creative. And they cost less than what spinet pianos cost. And they never need to be serviced. So you don't need to bother our friend Joel Smith. He's fine with that, by the way. Uh, and um, uh, they're great to learn to play on. So if you've not tried one yet, that is the one thing I would say you got to come in and try if you're brand new to pianos and, and you just don't know what to look for. And Tim keeps looking at himself because we've got a monitor there. <laughs> okay. I keep pointing up to look at the camera. Anyway, you know what's interesting, and this is I think one of the critical distinctions of Yamaha. As I, I was mentioning earlier, Yamaha is the world's largest manufacturer of acoustic pianos with experience since 1900 of building some of the world's finest pianos. Yeah, it, so interesting enough, um, in the late 1800s, um, I think his name is Korosuko 
Yamaha. Toro Suka. Huh? Toro Suka. So he uh, started building uh, pipe reed organs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he, uh, there's a story about where he actually uh, finished one. He wanted to show it to uh, the local uh, head of the town. Mm-hmm. So he put it on his back, and he actually carried this thing over a mountain to get to the town. And um, keep talking. I'm going to do because somebody's asking, can you show us a Clavanova, please? Oh, yeah, sure. I'm going to move some cameras. I can see in one of my camera views, I might be able to Should move the camera. Yeah, here? you keep talking. And and you explain, yeah, explain the Clavanova. All right, so and then you just give me the high sign when you want it. So, anyway, so he um, had taken this pipe, uh, this reed organ, not pipe, a reed organ over and, and demonstrated it. And this set his mind on fire for how to build uh, instruments. And it was around 1900 that he first got into the the pianos. But this man had uh, actually gone to, at that time, World's Fairs were a very big thing. And that's where a lot of pianos were being shown off. Uh, You know, they were, uh, you know, the leading technology, uh, you know, the evolving technology in the homes of, you know, 100 and 120 years ago. And so he actually toured these World Fairs to see what other people were doing while he was perfecting his own product. So if you look at the Yamaha uh, logo, you know, so, mu- so many of us are, you know, you're familiar with Yamaha Motors, and you've seen that logo, and it looks like the spokes on a wheel, right? But actually, the musical division came first. Yamaha Motors didn't come in until around the 1950s or so. I don't know the exact year. But f- the first 60 years of it was pianos and with musical instruments. And if you look at that logo, it's actually three tuning forks that are crossed with a circle around them. And if you see that logo and you see these tuning forks floating in the center, then that is Yamaha music. And if those tuning forks touch the outside circle and they they then represent spokes much more, that's the motors division. That is so cool. I I, I wish I had those graphics here. Anyway, I want to share a couple comments. Owen Lovell from The Piano Buyer just left a very nice oh, comment. Sure, <laughs> he yeah, says, hi. congrats on the new location. Do you give out free Philips Seafood or Grotto Pizza with purchase? <laughs> 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 great suggestion, Owen. Really great yeah, suggestion. We'll, we'll take that to the next board. Uh, thank you one. so much from the uh, the Piano Buyer crew. About the Piano Buyer, one of the best. Hey, if, you, if you're looking for a great resource for, it's kind of like the Consumer Reports. Absolutely, yeah. Pianos. Pianobuyer.com. It is the most unbiased, the most researched, and uh, the most widely distributed consumer's guide to the modern piano market that's been available for the last 30 years. Yeah, yeah, amazing, amazing resource. Yeah, they've got uh, pricing guides in there Mm -hmm. so you know that you're you're getting a good deal. And uh, we're always very quick to want to use that uh, resource because it's uh, all-encompassing, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How'd you do on setting up? A well, uh, I'm gonna t- I'm gonna train you to be the videographer. Do you see all those little monitors there? I do. <laughs> see camera two. Okay. Yep. So when I walk over there, yep. I want you to hit camera the button oh. number two. That's okay. That's <laughs> camera that's two. So yeah. So, uh, so camera two. Camera two. I'm, I'm gonna. Two. Yeah. So I don't I, think I can. I, ha- that I have to. I have to apologize. Like I said, this is what I love about live streams. They're so unpredictable. You guys. Thank you. I thought we were just going to show two pianos, but people want to see more. So I don't have microphones set up on the Clavinova that I have here, but eh, I got this. You okay. Know. So, but I'll, I'll at least talk through. And uh, in fact, you know, I need to make a video on, on the model that I'm going to show you. So we'll just take a, take a quick look at this. All right, hold on. Got a lot of comments. Congratulations from March in England. Well, thank you. Oh, we, we had hi. somebody from Singapore earlier saying congratulations as well. Lovely. Thank you so much. Yes, the uh, our uh, I, I made a brand new Yamaha CVP 800 series 809 specifically video. That's probably going to be coming out as soon as we get some more in stock, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, we we have uh, recently received. So that is that's been a challenge. So yeah. uh, with the the pandemic. With the shipping concerns, there was apparently an issue with a factory in Japan that mm-hmm. supplied a lot of chips to a lot of people. So there's been like this perfect storm, this confluence of issues that had some shipping problems pop up. Yep. And uh, so supply has been tricky, but it it's is getting up. better. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah so uh, we, um, you know, we've got quite a lot of people that have, are finally getting their orders fulfilled that have been waiting patiently for months. So thank you for your patience. And um, uh, if you do want 
one of these items, like what we're about to show you, or an eight or nine, we are actually beginning to get them with some regularity. So that's great. All right, I'm going to attempt to, now again, I apologize. This is not the kind of microphone that I like to show a piano off with, but at least I'll talk through one of the clavinovas and maybe one-handedly I can show you what it looks and sounds like. Again, forgive me, I don't have many views, but let me walk over there. Oh, hey, it's Jim Mundy, my one of my students from my online school. Mm. Hey, Jim, thank you so much for the congratulations. And I'm going to go head over to this clavinova that we have in the corner that I happen to have a camera pointed to. So when I get there, hit number two for me, please, OK? I am going to hit button number two when he looks at me. All right, let's see. I'm ready. OK, you all set? I'm ready. Yeah, hit, hit number two. OK, so uh, you, hopefully you'll be able to hear me through this wireless microphone. But I'm actually sitting on an entry-level clavinova, the CLP 625. Oh, come on over, Glenn. It's a live show. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's being he's being courteous. This is the CLP 625. Again, except, excuse me, 725. My brain is all over the place. What's really interesting is that even though this is an entry level Clavinova of the 700 series, uh, uh, Yamaha's you still have the sound of a nine foot concert grand right from the get go. Uh, what's beautiful, too, is when I, I touch the keys, the t keys are textured. The white keys have something called ivorite. These white keys actually have micro pores that absorb sweat and moisture, make it easy for you to play and jump around without slipping off the keys. If you ever played synthesizers, a lot of them have plastic toy-like keys, and they, they really, you can really feel the difference in terms of just the texture of the top of the keys. And the black keys, have, again, I wish I had a camera that was closer up. The black keys have a textured wood feel to them. And again, it's wonderful for... I'm wondering if I can play something one-handed here. Three full pedals. So for in, in other words, what I can do is there's three pedals just like a grand piano. So I can hit the middle pedal, which is the sostenuto pedal. I'm going to see if I can do this. Tell me if this sounds awful. Okay. This microphone. What I'm doing is I'm pushing, playing this note, pushing the middle pedal, and it holds that note for me. This is a feature that you only find on grand pianos or clavinovas. What's really cool is, uh, as Tim was talking earlier, you know, the older pianos, acoustic pianos of this size, were called spinets, right? The middle pedal for spinets and for upright pianos, uh, most upright acoustic pianos, is really meant to be a practice mute. You push this down, and it puts a piece of cloth over that so that you can practice quietly. It muffles the sound. But here, we don't need to do that because we can plug in headphones. And it's absolutely silent, and you just hear the sound of the piano through the headphones, and nobody else hears you playing, so that you can focus and concentrate and not be distracted by anything else around you. Um, and even for an entry-level piano, I, mean, I think this sounds great. OK, let's see what this sounds like. I'm going to use my, my wireless handheld mic, which is not meant for music, but play a little something for you, OK? going to jump over back to my main camera over here. All right, let me see what kind of comments we got here. Uh, yeah, it does, oh, okay, well, thank you. Um, thank you, Mrs. Ms. D. She says it doesn't sound awful, <laughs> at least through this microphone. That's what we were going for. Yeah, that, well, I, I don't <laughs> want to be too awful. But like I said, and again, I, I apologize that I can't show you more views of the piano. There's not much to see. It's actually, what's nice about that, the, the entry level, CLP 725. Um, it, there aren't really any buttons. You just turn it on, you play a piano. I mean, there's volume. There's a, like a little volume slider and a few little buttons on the side, but there's really not much else to do. If you're looking for a basic piano just to get started, you don't have a lot of space, you want to be able to put headphones on, and, but you want to get the feel, a weighted key feel with real textured keys. Right. 725 is a great place to and, start. And there are situations we found that that instrument was the appropriate one because there are 
there's really nothing to be distracted by. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, when you turn it on, it defaults to the nine foot concert grand setting. You play the piano. That's it. And that, that I actually love that. You know, so that you know if. When my headphones are on, I am in the world of my music. I, I, don't, I don't hear noise outside the window distracting me. I don't hear the television. I don't hear other people. I can just be in the world of the music. Right. You know? Yeah. So uh, it's really wonderful. And what's interesting is that Yamaha provides a piano at every level. You know, this is, so the 725, their most affordable Clavinova of the premium line of digital pianos. And then from there on up, you start adding some incredible qual you know, qualities in, say, the 735, the 45, the uh, 775. And yeah, the, you, know? you know, the the, the, the 35 and the 45, those, oh, we, yeah. those are so popular. Yeah. Uh, the 45 has uh, wooden keys, uh, has this incredible sound system that's built in. And, y and right, they even have now, you can use the piano as your Bluetooth speaker. Oh, that's right, yeah. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, people pay hundreds of dollars for great Yamaha audio, mm. and you have in this piano great Yamaha audio. So they make it uh, so that you can use it in other ways. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, of course, with digital pianos, what's what, we're s what I'm seeing, being the tech lover that I am, is m are more and more resources from YouTube and apps and ways of connecting to all of these resources to learn to play the piano. It's never been easier to play and learn your favorite songs and a clavinova like that connected with you know several wireless connection options that we can provide. Mm -hmm. How cool! It's just so much fun. Yeah, right? like uh, the app Flowkey. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah. Flowkey has uh, this amazing library in there and. Uh, it behaves very well with everything that Yamaha makes, but it especially works well with the CSP line, right? We need to do a Discover Yamaha <laughs> show here in Delaware. For anybody who's ever played Guitar Hero, <laughs> the CSP works with that concept in mind, with the waterfall lights coming yeah. down, and it's over the keys. You plug that app in, you hit, oh, I want to learn how to play Claire de Lune, and then, boop, here it comes. Then you go, da. <laughs> Da, 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 da. Right, it's. Uh, uh, I, I so love his virtue. I love his virtue. So one really cool thing about the CunninghamPiano.com website is that we have a very rich library. If you want to learn about some of these, you know, Clavinovas, come visit our website because we've we've created a lot of videos that go probably more in depth than most other folks do to really help you understand why each model, what makes each model unique, helpful, fun quality yeah and we we really try I, I mean, we try to make the videos fun and we're also always coming up with more content but so uh, that's a great place to start your research and many people do right but i think what we're going to do at some point i'm getting inspired because the crabs are calling <laughs> i think what we'll do because the the benefit of the live stream is as well i can see like jung suk lee i'm going to just put Chung-Suk's comment, they go, <laughs> just a little something, LOL, excellent. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Even with bad microphones. One of the cool things that about with the live stream is that we can interact with you in real time. So when people, if we have, say, a, a selection of, of, of certain instruments that we want to feature, mm. you have questions, uh, we can answer them right there. Maybe we can just host, what do you think, Glenn? Should we do, do that here? Sounds great. Uh, Glenn agrees, okay. So, you know, uh, we were talking before the live stream and we were talking about the different things that people, different kinds of products mm. that people need, mm -hmm. right? And I had uh, mistakenly made the comment, well, people don't really need oh, pianos. Oh, I disagree. <laughs> and you disagreed with me, and you made a very, very valid argument as to why they do. So Hugh. Yes. Why do people need pianos? You know, it's something I could speak on an esoteric level, what has been so, and as an artist, what has been so heartening is that I'm not just spitting words, you know, or waxing eloquent. We've actually seen during this pandemic, when everything was shut down, when people were just scrambling at toilet paper, there was this moment in our collective history where we started to realize, why are we here? And there's, if there's nothing else around, what, what? are we here for? What makes life mm. worth living? Yeah. Okay, once I have my toilet paper, once I have enough food and water, then what? And people suddenly 
separated from all the distractions that, you know, really, in, in a sense, our world, you know, uh, one of the biggest struggles of modern life, you know, is the, the little notifications in your phone being, you know, uh. black mirror, right? Being, gl being glued to technology and being a technology person myself. I mean, I love technology, but I also understand the struggle with being too dependent on it for distraction. Yes. What the piano gives us, and I, I'm going to say the piano specifically, several things. Number one, just from, and I, I'm reading, I just started reading a, a fascinating book, I'm just kind of just like a third of the way through it. When Breath Becomes Air, wh this is a, neuro, uh, a neuroscientist who sadly passed away from cancer, but this is his book, his testimony before he passed away, and his whole search was trying to understand existentially the meaning of life from both a personal point of view, but also a biological point of view, almost a biological philosophy, studying the brain, this amazing thing that can come up with reason and meaning. Playing the piano is one of the few activities, physical activities, that stimulates both hemispheres. The right hand stimulates the left hemisphere, the left hand stimulates the right hemisphere. Neuro neuroscientists have recognized playing the piano is one of the only full brain activities that everybody can benefit from, not just concert pianists, everybody, okay? And that being said, I, I know I'm just kind of taking kind of circuitous route, but what we've seen is a huge increase in the sale of pianos. People sharing stories of how having this piano in their home saved their sanity, gave them a sense of hope, and meaning in their lives to realize that life is more than toilet paper. I, I, don't, I don't mean that facetiously, but the m beauty is what defines us as a human being. You're uh, reminding me of a story. One of my voice teachers mm. I studied with for quite a long time, Richard Johnson, uh, he had served in the Vietnam War mm. uh, as a young man, of course. And uh, so uh, when he was done and he had seen things that were uh, obviously, we all yeah. understand what potential exists there. Mm. Um, he decided at that moment when he was done with that, that he wanted to spend the rest of his life in the pursuit of beauty. Mm. Mm -hmm. And he dedicated his life to his musical pursuits from that. And, and that, that's what it is. That's what There are enough things in our lives that can potentially drag us into spaces we don't want to be. And uh, the piano keeps us where we do want to be. I, I had the incredible privilege of doing an interview with a wonderful musician who relayed the story of him traveling to his home country, which is being ravaged by civil war, mm. you know, and meeting up with these, these really horrible refugee camps, and mm. people just kind of lost in limbo, being deserted by different countries, all right? he brought with him plastic flutes. Wow. And now he didn't say this, but he was giving these flutes away to the children and teaching them music. And I made the, uh, made the remark that I still share with other people who say, well, why music? You know, when, when like I said, like the pandemic, when we're, we were stripped of all our superfluous entertainments or superfluous, just we have the bare essentials to live, it makes us a little more like a an, little more than animals. Animals need food, shelter, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so we, you know, and people in these camps were being treated like animals. Mm. By him giving them the gift of music, he helped people to realize these are not animals. These are human beings. That music, that art, that gives them a sense of worth and creativity. You're recognizing some animals don't make music. You know, they don't create. They don't explore beauty. The piano is part of that human exploration, the uh, exploration of the mind, the spirit, the heart, you know. And yes, love and beauty have meaning. They're not, we're just, you know, and this, these are the things that I think the piano speaks to on such a, a deep and powerful level. And the fact that most of the great composers around were pianists, I think, speaks to the brain benefits. So, I mean, I could go on for hours, but. Yes, so I, that's why I strongly opposed your statement when you <laughs> thought that <laughs> pianos are not necessary. I, 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 you know, I remember reading a story of a young Chinese uh, person uh, many years ago, 
didn't have access to a piano, didn't, wasn't able to afford one at the time. He drew a piano keyboard on paper and oh, yeah. practiced on the paper because he needed that. He needed music. I remember yeah. I, I, I had done that yeah. um, when I was in school and bored. <laughs> and I wanted to keep practicing. But uh, I, we were getting so many beautiful comments, so I want to repeat Dr. Kevin. Well, we did go he was down saying, down definitely rekindled my passion for piano during the pandemic. Right? You yeah. and so many other people hadn't played in over 20 years. Now I cannot imagine a day without touching the keys. Yes, exactly. And we're seeing that this this strange time that people are saying, this is the perfect opportunity to come back to the piano or start it for the first time. Yeah. You know, and rekindling the love. Let's see. Okay, hold on. He's right. Help to ward. Uh, yes. So you know, Ms. D is saying it's helped to ward off many a night of depression being so isolated. Mm. Absolutely. Okay. I'm so glad you share that. And Be Happy says, oh, great job describing the importance of music and how piano is important. I can hardly play myself. That's okay. But the, the enjoyment I have playing improves my life. Absolutely. And that's what we're, we're, that's what we're here for. We want to make the piano available for everyone. Never played the piano in your life? Great. We'll help you get started. We want Absolutely. you to, uh, to, to experience the beauty and the benefits, the life-changing results. That, that's even playing a simple song. You realize there's something. You are creating something Ephem you know, it's just here, it's gone, but it's beautiful, and you've just br brought something beautiful into the world through that. And to those people that are considering getting into it or uh, maybe have started but are a little shy, so uh, I play. I play, uh, I think, on a sort of advanced intermediate level. Oh, you you're, too, you're too humble. Well, uh, yeah, but, I, but, you know, I, I work with you. <laughs> And I work with Nina, True, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. who has her doctorate in composition and is mm. just a fantastic pianist. But the one thing that I, I, I think I have an interesting point of view because I work with you mm. and Nina and, and some just terrific musicians where to a person, every single person on our staff loves it mm. when somebody who does not play comes oh, yeah. in and says that they would like to learn. You know, it is, it, is, it is not something that you should feel any sense of apprehension about trying because there is nothing more fun than watching people get to learn for the first time. Mm -hmm. So if you're, if you're at all thinking, oh, I don't want to go because I don't want to be, I don't want to look silly, uh, you're not. You're not going to look silly. Just try, and you will be so appreciated for the attempt. Not just that, but I, I think the joy, there's twofold joy. The joy first, of course, in hearing somebody play a song, but even more importantly, the joy of watching them be moved by yeah. that experience of realizing, yeah. and I've heard the story s happily many times, I never believed that I could do this. Yeah. You know? And I, I, you know, and just the, the, the encouragement, the uplift of saying, I can make beautiful music. Mm -hmm. The piano really is one of the most perfect instruments to make it easy, about as easy as it can get. Well, uh, that's know? true. I mean, if, if you're learning to play the violin or you're learning to play the flute, you know, flute, you have to learn the embouchure. Uh, violin, you have to learn how to not make it sound like a cat screeching, <laughs> you know. Um, so uh, y that's not the way it is with the piano. Piano, it's, and you made it a, a sound. So, you know, it is much more approachable. Yes. Mm -hmm. Much more, it's, among the most approachable instruments. And then, of is. course, the, the most approachable and at the same time, the most infinitely complex. Yeah. And that's, uh, there's <laughs> that's, it starts a life journey that truly, you never get tired of exploring. And, you, you, know, I, you know, I've been playing literally over 50 years, and I'm still, like, I, I, I listen to pieces of music. I, I look at sheet and different kinds of music. I'm like, I cannot believe how beautiful this or that. 88 keys, that's mm -hmm. all we've got, you know? <laughs> I remember my senior recital for, uh, uh, in college with the, I had to have a senior recital for my mm -hmm. music degree. Mm -hmm. And uh, my, my teacher were locked in the recital hall before the night, yeah, you know, the night before. And, and he's having me play this, he says, now, no, make it sound like a bell. I'm like, okay. Hmm. No, no, like a bell. Oh, okay. No, like a bell. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> but you can do that with a piano depending on your technique and your stroke. You, there's so much that can come out of oh this. Oh my goodness. What apparently seems simple. Gary, Gary Grafman, he would say, he would play something. Well, can you make it sound a little bit more like, make, make it sound like a French horn? Can, can, can you make it sound like a cello? It's like, okay. <laughs> no, 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 more like a bassoon this year. <laughs> he would always describe, you know, no, no, play the pass like an orchestral instrument. Like right. And your imagination is going like, I can do that on a piano? <laughs> yes. On a good can. one, you can. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> on a good but one. I, I always, we were always like amazed that he would say, and then, yes, 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 you got it. That the level of imagination that the, the piano produces. I, wanna, I just want to read a few more of these these comments. They're so wonderful, Kevin. Thank you, Doctor Kevin. Music is a truly is truly universal. It is the common human language that binds us all together. Yes, I. Mm. Isn't that true? Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, John Mason says, "Hey, the Salisbury area has a quality <laughs> piano business. We are so happy to be here for you guys." Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, especially for the crabs. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, what what a wonderful area. Yeah. Yeah, it's a delightful town. I can't wait to get to know it better. Yeah. So anyway, whew, we've had quite a long. This is I think this is the longest uh, live stream I've ever done, and we've had a, had a very faithful following that's kind of kept up with us. So the whole thing. I'm looking at all these comments come through. Thank you well, so much. We yeah. got a little deep on that. We and, did. And yeah. that was fun. And and so, uh, you know, Hugh and I worked together at the King of Prussia store. And uh, you should hear the conversations that we have when people aren't there. You know, we, we really go down some of these rabbit holes pretty far, don't we? Well, because, you know, so it's, it's kind it's of fun to get to do that here for with everybody else involved. It's inevitable when, when, when we're surrounded by beauty and in the pursuit of um, doing what we can in this business structure to, to make beauty available as much as possible, mm -hmm. you know, and yeah. in a sustainable way. Oh, B sharp cyclist. Yeah, I miss the East Coast and Maryland blue crab. <laughs> <laughs> we got something good here. Come come, come back to, to I Delmar. had no idea. I I did, so they taught me how to eat crabs last night. For the, and so, I mean, I've had maybe some, and I've, I love seafood. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I can't wait to do it again! Yay! <laughs> so we'll have to come. We're gonna have to come back here a couple more times, uh -huh. you know, on a regular basis. Have our crabs, and, and maybe we'll just do. A, a, I'll, I'll plan out a much more intricate show for us, hosted here yes. by, by Glenn, and uh, we'll and, and, yeah. and experiment with a number of different yeah. models. Yeah. You know, the N3X. I, I thought I should say this, and mm. I forgot to say it earlier. So, um, what's neat about the piano that we heard er the first piano? Uh, the first two performances was on the hybrid N3X, the Avant Grand. And um, that piano, when the Philly Pops performs outside, that's what you're hearing. Yeah, yeah. So we, we've, we have a very active rental uh, department in the greater Philadelphia area. So we rent pianos to, we've rented them to Barbara Streisand, we've re re you know, to uh, John Legend, you know, uh, Chick Corea. You know, so we're, we're very fortunate to get to serve some amazing artists. Mm. And, and the Philly Pops, when they perform outside, the pianist, whoever pi whatever the pianist is that they have that they've engaged, they want to have a real piano to play. Mm. They want something with a real action and uh, but they can't depend on the atmospheric uh, uh, situation right, to keep right. the piano yeah, in yeah. good shape. Right, right. So uh, with the avant grand, everybody's happy. Wasn't, I wasn't going to do this, but should I play something on the avant grand just to close us Absolutely. off? Absolutely. What, what, what do you guys I, think? I, so I actually there was okay. a moment earlier I was going to ask you to play. Okay. But I thought you know, and, and this is the way that my brain works. Okay. When I'm doing technical things. Yes. Yes. I tend to not want to do the artistic things, <laughs> right? Because they both kind of are. Yes, are they're they're quite confusing. But I'm I'm, I'm going to train you. Okay, I'm going to train you because I don't know. You, of course, you can't see this, but I've, I'll probably post some pictures of the mess that I've made. <laughs> this is a literal snake pit. You can't see all of my snakes. You can see some of them, but I've got a, a, a massive A10 Mini Extreme ISO video switcher board. Yeah, I've got a zoom mixer over here. And it's got buttons with numbers. I'm pretty good <laughs> with buttons with numbers. <laughs> so, okay. Oh, Jennifer. Oh, Jennifer Nicole Campbell says, yes. All right. Listen, I, I didn't practice, okay? I don't have much in my fingers, but... Let, let, I, let, I let don't me, believe that well, for, for a I minute. Mean, I don't believe that. Okay, okay. <laughs> so let, let me set the mixer up, okay? And then I'm going to show you. Take a look. Yeah. Camera four. Camera four five. And okay, five. Four That's five. it. Four and what five. I'm going to do okay. is I'm going to set it to auto so it'll blend nicely between them. I can okay. do this. Can you do this? Okay. So I'm going to switch off and I'm going to play something. Okay. All right.
Let's see if this thing is still on. It might have shut off. Yeah, it's shut off. Let's go ahead and turn this thing back on. You, should, you might want to explain the fact that this thing turned itself off. No. Hold on, hold on. I should, ex I should explain <laughs> that in 3X, uh, Yamaha is one of the most environmentally conscious companies. All of their clavinovas are designed to shut themselves off to conserve power. So that's what this N3X did. So I'm turning it back on. Four and five, okay. <laughs> what am I gonna play? Uh, I don't know, Let's, we'll do something simple. Um, Little old chestnut, you just did that come out? Did that come out all right? Mm, let's out there, see. Right? No, <laughs> thanks, Ms. D. Well, <laughs> you know what? I again, and we I know we we've we've talked about it, but I can the cool things I can actually demonstrate it. This piano, you know, I'm a purist in one sense in terms of I understand what an acoustic piano can. Oh, thanks, Jim. I appreciate it. Um, oh, thanks. Oh, thanks, Luba. <laughs> you were just here. <laughs> yeah, she was just here. <laughs> you know, uh, again, 
what I'm so struck with with the N3X, this avant grand, this is the most advanced digital right. piano. Advanced in the sense that uh, there are thi when you push the keys, you actually feel the vibration of the strings through the keys, just like you would on a, on a grand piano. You hit a chord and you feel the piano is alive. And, when you, and the, even the pedal has vibrations going through the pedal. And the, the, of course, the lid resonates. And the funny thing, you know, as a pianist, as an artist, there are, there's an incredible symphony of interactions between the strings, the soundboard, the rim, the aliqua, all these physics uh, it, it, you know, phenomena. Now, and, and again, I think one of the things I really appreciate about working with Cunningham Piano is, is learning some of the, the physics equations and how that all works. This piano, I touch it and it's like, it just lives under my fingers and I can shape the pedaling, I can, I can wisp the notes the way I do on an acoustic piano. I can touch it a certain way and it just gets that sort of subtlety that I just like, I can do this on a great yeah, acoustic piano. And that piano does it, it's crazy. There's, there's sampling yeah. and there's modeling. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, the, the concept of modeling is something that, um, you know, a, as sound synthesis has evolved, you know, we, we can all probably, may, maybe, uh, I, for me it's uh, the, the, the sine wave sound, mm -hmm. you know, from like the 1970s, the, the sound, it's like a piercing sharp sound, and that was just a, sh a strictly um, synthetically produced using, uh, you know, only computers to come up with these sounds. Mm. And then in the 80s, we had uh, the introduction of sampling, mm -hmm. which is taking a digital imprint of a sound and reproducing it. Uh, the first technology uh, takes a lot of computing power. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The second te technology takes a lot of memory. Mm -hmm. And so as memory was increasing in, in computers, we had much more advanced samples. Well, now, we've hit this time period where in the technology world, they're both coming together. And that's what sampling and modeling does when you combine them, when you have a real acoustic piano being recreated and that data is being used to behave in a physical nature the way that it's supposed to. Now here's what's what makes Yamaha so uniquely positioned. You know, modeling has actually been around you know, for quite some time. There are many software developers that, that, are, that have experimented with this. Yamaha, however, <laughs> they, they, they bring, they, I mean, they, uh, let me put it this way. One of the most beautiful things about technology, especially when you become uh, you know, a computer engineer or a software programmer, you get to the level that I've observed with some colleagues where it's art. It is pure art. You understand, the the mechanics of these machines, and then you create art, and then it becomes a very personal statement, how I want this machine to render this graphic or to play that sound, right? Now, a lot of technology, a lot of companies, they, they're, they're making digital pianos, they, they try to do their version of sampling. Yamaha is bringing the heart and soul of over, a, you know, how many, you know, over a hundred some years, right, of building acoustic pianos. And that experience, and that reaction, the craftsmanship, the hand-built feel, and even with their, you know, their, their grand pianos, the hand-spun bass strings, the, the curved ribs, and the different, le and all that experience into the digital realm. When they create a digital piano, they don't want to just create a, you know, something, you know, just to achieve, but they want people to forget that it's a digital piano. And just before the world locked down in the pandemic, yeah. you had the chance to meet these people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Hugh was invited to Japan mm -hmm. and got to have a tour of this facility. And you know, it, it, it's easy when you see things like these th products mm -hmm. to forget that there are people behind it. And you got to meet them. And you got to see how much they care and how much uh, they dedicate their lives yeah. Mm -hmm. to quality and uh, craftsmanship. Well, it's, it's a calling. Yeah. That's, that's what's so fascinating for everybody, for, you know, the people who are working in these, the most sophisticated assembly line, the most 
technologically advanced assembly line I've ever seen. This beautiful marriage, and I, you know, I love technology, but this marriage of robotics and human hands. You know, a, uh, an acoustic piano is tuned on the factory of the line about four times, four, four to six times. The first two or three passes are done by robots, but the final passes are done by humans. You know, it's like, that is so cool. Yeah. You know, yeah, the, machines, and the machines are there to help move the pianos into place for the technicians to do the manual hand voicing, you know? And people, one lady, she just sits there with special lights, staring at a piano, running her finger over every crevice to look for the tiniest defects, you know? Hand spun, I said to mention the hand spun. They could get a machine to spin the bass strings, but they understand the variability, the human element. Right, but they, not really. Yes. Yeah. You know? And right. it's just like that masterful understanding that in the end, it's that the last hands are human hands, always on every piano. It's yeah. so incredible. Yeah, it sure is. Yeah. I'm having way too much fun. <laughs> You like hearing us ramble? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we really so lovely comments. Jennifer, it. thank you so much for the sweet <laughs> comments. Thank you so much. Matthew Riss saying Mazel Tov. Thank you so much. Really, guys, you guys are so wonderful. Again, it's so cool to have this sort of reaction. But we want to see you in person. So for those of you who are in the Del Mar area, please come visit this store. Please come see us. And even if Tim and I aren't here, Glenn's going to be here. He's oh, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And if you're in King of Prussia, of course, we're there. We'd love to see you there. Cherry you got Hill. Cherry Hill. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the factory, this is a little confusing for those that are interested. The factory itself is not actually open to the public. Mm. Uh, we're more than happy to meet you there and give you a tour. So if you set that up in advance, thrilled to do that. Um, but those guys, that's where, uh, that's where the craftsmen are working. You know, and they've got tools in their hands, and they, we like them to keep them in their hands, right? <laughs> but uh, but we do have four locations, and uh, but uh, KOP and Cherry Hill and Del Mar, doors always open. Yeah, and boy, this is what I mean. I have such gratitude for folks all around because you know we wouldn't be growing if people weren't buying pianos. We, right? Yeah, and and I I want to express my own personal gratitude for. Uh, the people that are coming in and being our customers because we are growing. We're growing. Uh, I was joking uh, earlier today with Glenn, you know, uh, you know, for uh, I've been with the company for uh, what's it been 24 years now. Mm. Uh, so, um, you know, we've always been a small company, you know, a small company that does a lot of big things, but small. And my joke now is that we're medium. <laughs> 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 and, uh, uh, but, and, and maybe uh, we'll keep growing if, if, uh, if well, you all keep coming in. But, but I, I think that the, the, the challenging thing is how do you remain a small company at heart in, in, a, in a digital age, in an age that you know, is obsessed with technology and progress and you know, uh, growing, you know, we have mega corporations and this and that, and yet how do you still retain the heart and soul of, of a small company that well, cares about who we work with. I think right? this live stream is a very good example, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You know, so here we are, we've got, you know, 30, 40, 50 some odd people that are all hanging out together, and we're not together, but we want to be together. Right. You know, like we would like to be able to be in the room together, but at this moment right now, we're not. Yeah. Well, but we want to keep reaching out to you. We want, we don't want this to be you sticking a credit card into a machine and a piano pops out. That's never going to no. be the goal. No. Um, we want to be able to do this in person. We want you to come in and play the pianos. We want you to say, wow, I really like this. I'm not so crazy about that. I love that. That's what we want to do. And more and more importantly, I think we want to, <laughs> maybe I'm going to sound megalomaniacal here, but uh, we want to change your lives. <laughs> and I mean that in the very best sense. We want you to, to experience the beauty of making music yourself. We want you to understand, you know, in a sense, when you, when you start to play the piano, you actually develop superpowers. Your sense of hearing becomes heightened. Your 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 dexterity, in, you know, it becomes superhuman for all intents and purposes. Your sensitivity to sound, to touch, to all the create the creative energies, even emotionally, you know, being almost an emotional. I wouldn't say superhuman, but you know, there there are these traits that musicians develop or you know people in who just take a few lessons and learn suddenly like I never heard that before. Well, our, yeah. our moods can impact yeah. uh, our other experiences yeah. right mm -hmm. like if if you're having a bad day yeah you know and you're just not ev everything seems to go bad it's like uh like the dominoes keep going down or you're you start the day off great you're having a good day oh all of a sudden 
well, I'm have everything's going well today, mm -hmm. right? That's the music, the foundation of your day, the, the way that you you feel can impact the other things, the result of the rest of the things you choose to participate in. And when you have that wonderful outlet through music to express and vent and to be heard creatively, even if nobody else is in the room. <laughs> if you're having a bad day, play Chopin. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, looks like we're getting some more guests coming into the store. This is so lovely. This is fantastic. It really is. So it's great. Listen, I, I think this is a great place to say thank you. The, you can see the, ad, the address down there, the phone number over there. Come be a friend of Cunningham Piano if you're here near the Del Mar area, Salisbury area. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I would love to take a moment to... to Stop because I want to get to the snack table. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you so for hanging out with us, and can't wait to see you here in Del Mar in person with Glenn, the amazing Glenn running this store. He's done such a beautiful job setting it's this up. Yeah, gorgeous, absolutely. And, gorgeous. and anyway, we'll see you around. We'll we'll try to come back real soon because the crabs are calling. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much. Bye bye.